Hello and welcome to the PC Security Channel. This is Security Talk, where we give you the most recent news in security. So let's get straight to it this time. So first of all, we're going to be discussing the Logjam attack, which is very similar to the Freep vulnerability, but it breaks TS TLS security. So basically, the difference between this and Freep vulnerability is that this involves the Diffie Hellman keys instead of the RSA export keys, which is why it's Freak. I guess it was called something like factoring RSA export keys or something like that, yes. So, you know, all this is basically a result of um, a US government export policy that allowed browsers to use weaker encryption or for other countries they were supposed to use weaker encryption and they couldn't use the stronger encryption available basically to protect their own information but this has gone and out of hand now and weaker using weaker encryption leads to what we like to call a man in the middle attack in which the cyber criminals can intercept your data as a result of using the weaker key so it is important to use strong encryption to yes. protect your data so basically what happens in the logjam attack is um, a vulnerable server, it can be downgraded to use 512-bit encryption. And that is not nearly as secure, and uh, with the current computing power, a lot of agencies could just break it in a matter of minutes and get access to all the data passing between the server and client computers, which is definitely not a good thing. So basically, they can just steal login credentials, pretty much anything they want, or even modify the data. So that's pretty bad. Yeah, and some of the services that are even that support the export ciphers that are at risk include HTTPS and POP3. Yes, so mail SMTP. servers. Yes. Now, who is going to be doing this? Obviously, you know, a hacker with a really small, worthless laptop is not going to be the kind of person who will be targeting this. They're easier targets to make and break, but Someone this is... Someone with a very powerful yes. system. And who fits the description? Attack. A hacker. Yeah, a hacker, but yeah. not necessarily, you know, your everyday hacker. This is probably going to be used by intelligent agencies like the NSA. And even there have been suggestions like Edward Snowden, once again, has leaked some documents that suggest that the agency may have been able to break prime numbers used in this Diffie-Hellman key exchange. So there's definitely another window for government spying and stuff like that over here. Anybody with good resources is definitely going to make use of this vulnerability. So the good news is Internet Explorer is already patched. And uh, for other browsers, they're already already wait, working on the patches. So that's a good thing. But, you know, this is just another reminiscent of the freak attack. So let's move on to the next topic, which is scareware. Fake Minecraft apps scare hundreds of thousands on Google Play. So this is a really nice article by ESET, and uh, what they've done is basically discovered a lot of scareware applications. Now, Slade, you remember fake AVs? Yes, I do. They're designed to trick the user into downloading them onto the system, and then they enter their payment information to pay for the service, and then they end up stealing their identity and their credentials. Yes, so that's basically how fake AV works on a PC or Windows system. But unfortunately for the hackers, you know, Android and many other operating systems do not have the you know, same way of infiltration. They do not allow them to infiltrate the operating system in the same way or to install their application and block other things from starting. So this is what they've done. So instead of, you know, just making the exact functionality within that application, they're just showing weird ads of something like GData Mobile Security, which is obviously fake. GData is a legitimate company, but they're showing fake messages like that. And when you click on those, what happens is you basically get subscribed to a premium rate SMS service that charges you a ton of money. And the hackers probably get a commission for that. Yeah, the image kind of reminds me actually just from an overall look on it in a way of some ransomware or something just with the language and everything it's using in its overall appearance. Yes. Which I realize it's not, but it just kind of reminds me of that seeing these images on mm -hmm. here. 
So, you know, guess what applications are faking this thing? So, the scareware applications are mostly cheats for Minecraft. Now, Minecraft is popular, so I understand why they go after this game. And cheats for Minecraft. So, th that's... So, people, you literally pay a price for cheating. You're gonna cheat, you're gonna get malware like this. So, don't do it. Yeah, and the Android OS is being targeted. It's very popular with a lot of users as well. Yeah. And that's mobile malware right there. So this is an interesting piece of news. Um, by the way, everyone, we're just going to include all these links in the description of the video. So if you want, you can just go down there and look at these posts in detail if you want to. So let's move on to the next topic. So security questions may not be as secure as previously thought. Now, the problem with security questions is when they're not answered right. What happens is sometimes users, they try to, you know, act smart and they think, okay, if I'm just going to answer the obvious one, some of my friends or someone might be just able to guess that. But if I answer something wrong, then it's not going to work out and it'll be more secure. But that's not the case, is it? No, it's not based on, actually, based on this study, some interesting statistics are showing that actually users, it's easier for hackers to guess their security question answers when the users do that. Yes. So what happens in security question? The whole concept, so security question is not a password. So answering so it... It's used, yes, it's used to basically help secure an account with another authentication method. And the basically whole point. they ask you a question like, where were you born or yes. something like that. Yes. And then you better remember that answer because if you don't, Retrieving it is sometimes very complicated. Yes, well, the whole point of security questions is that it's very easy for the person who is, um, you know, actually the owner of the account. For them, it's very easy to yes. answer. Like something like, what's your fa father's middle name? What's your phone number? Where were you born? You know, you never forget that. That's the basic advantage of security questions. You're never going to forget where you were born. So if you no. answer it correctly... You don't have to remember anything at all, because when you're asked, you're automatically going to produce the correct answer. But for a hacker who doesn't know you, it is going to be much more difficult. But answering it incorrectly, you know, doesn't change the odds for the hacker. They can probably have the same try. But for you, it makes it a lot more difficult. And a lot of users basically just forget their security questions, and that's, that's a problem. So... You know, what Google is saying is that, you know, if you answer your security questions correctly, it's you have a better chance of remembering it. And, uh, you know, it doesn't make it any easier for the hacker to pick out the answer. So, you know, it's it's probably a good idea to, you know, just use the correct data and security questions. So don't mess around with that. There are a lot of statistics on this page, so they've done some research on it, and uh, you know, seventy-nine percent of users re recall the answer to which city they were born in and stuff like that. So, if you want to read the details, once again, you can always go to the description of this video. All right, let's move on to the next topic. That is point-of-sale malware. Slade, do you want to explain this one? Yes, the point-of-sale malware is basically where the criminals are basically taking advantage of the devices that you use to slide your card through. And they are actually reading the data off your off the credit card strips. And they are stealing, stealing that data from that. Yes. So at the point-of-sale they inject malware into those machines and then, wow, they've got galore of credit cards, free credit cards, just because people just come there, swipe away, and if the machine is compromised or the computer that's collecting the data is, then you're in big trouble. There can be a lot of card information stolen that way. So in this in case... This case yeah, oh, wow, like we both spoke using, at the same time. Yeah, it actually seems like they're using spam emails at this time. Yes. And macro viruses, it would seem. Yes, macro malware. So what they're doing is they're having malicious attachments, and when you open the attachment and enable macros, it executes, and it's it's a downloader, I guess. So it downloads some malware from the Internet, 
and uh, wow, such a nice domain we have eighty nice point two four two huh? yes Dro.exe. and they actually yeah. have some samples called uh, what was it called pos pos dot exe so they're going they're being pretty straight about what they're doing and um, you know once the malware is on the system it basically sets up communication with a few russian domains and uh, bam there goes all your data it basically searches your memory or your process for you know any matching credit card information it searches for a certain string format and once and it, it finds it that yes the criminals. yes and and, and that is a secure difficult. ssl channel yes yeah. so it's it's very difficult to detect it at the network level now if you rem remember poseidon that was another similar threat so they're they're pushing out new variants of these threats and there's probably more to come. Yes. So stay on guard, people. If you get any kind of, fa you know, emails with attachments, always be cautious with those. Yes. Check the sources. Is it from someone you know? And basically, what kind of file it is. You know, it's if it's doc, well, you don't have much of a choice, I'm guessing. But if it's executable, definitely don't open that. I don't think it's allowed anyway. But that's why, I guess, macro malware is the preferred choice. Of spreading malware through email because that's the easiest to slip by doc yeah. so and first PDF of all too, and double yes. extensions are also recommended to avoid opening those yes so basically keep your Microsoft Word if you use that or whatever you use for documents just keep it up to date so there are no vulnerabilities for this malware to exploit and secondly be extra careful with attachments I've had a bad experiences with uh, email attachments before, and I'm always very cautious. Make sure it's yeah, from a trusted the time, source. Though, hopefully, your email filter will flag them a lot of the times, but in the event they don't, it is a good idea to stay aware. Yes. But then again, this you know POS malware, it's, it's not exactly advice meant for the consumer because you can't do anything about it, but for sellers who, who are using credit card machines or using yes. some reader connected to their computer this is definitely useful information all right let's move on so this is probably the funniest news we have today high schooler yeah. allegedly hired third party ddos <laughs> to ddos yes, um, his school so this is this really nice wait shouldn't school. we do that <laughs> yeah. should learning we hire a DDoS? Hire yeah should we do a ddos it's it's it well, sounds like fun take down your school server you, know, you if, might if, want to on your school. <laughs> yeah, well, if if I'm having bad results, I might hire yes. you know um, a guy to DDoS. I I wouldn't hire no one because I don't trust them. What if what if they just DDoS, you know, my website instead or something like that? So I'd I'd probably just uh, you know do it myself. So get a lot of zombies, create a botnet, and DDoS your school. This is the lesson, kids. Um, you know if. I think Slade, we need to add a discretion over here that we are not responsible for the consequences if you do this. <laughs> yeah, well, the well, the child was sure <laughs> held responsible. They're recommending expelling him now. Looking into expelling him. Yes. So it's it's interesting that people are looking forward to using resources like this. I mean, this one way to put out everyone's hatred, I guess. So you're really frustrated you see, <laughs> with your school. Yeah, that that hacking. Just if even if you pay someone to hack, it's just the same as you hacking yourself. You still suffer the same consequences. Yeah, I mean, I mean that's one thing. I mean, if you're hiring someone to hack into something, I mean, yeah. they're probably getting some data about you. They might, they might attempt to steal some of your data and do something mm -hmm. to you as well, because all they care about is cash. So always think smart. Yeah. No, think it seriously. Don't DDoS nothing, people. And no. keep in mind, these are federal offenses. You can get punished for this. Some people take these things too lightly and end up regretting it. All right, then. Yeah, people, people don't even normally need a lot of skills to be able to do this kind of stuff either. You yeah, can find DDoS, out how to do this yes, anywhere. Yes, yes, and it's pretty cheap too. But keep in mind, this is not legal. This is unauthorized stuff. You're not supposed to do this. This is malicious behavior, and you can be punished. And we in no way condone any of these actions like this at all. Yeah. We work on preventing these. Yes. 
So I guess that's it for today. I was planning on having more, you know, shorter security talk episodes than maybe, let's say, one long one, because, you know, some people might lose interest. So, you know, give us some feedback. Let us know how you like this episode, whether you want them short, whether you want them long, we're just starting off, and you know, once we have a pattern set, we'll know what to do. So, we hope you enjoy it. Yeah, we hope you enjoy it, and thank you for the feedback. I noticed um, some feedback on the first episode. It was mostly positive, so we decided to make this into a full series, but we decided to split it into more episodes and maybe have five different topics in each episode. So let us know how you like that. We're just glad you guys that. are enjoying it. Yes. So that is it for this episode. Hope you enjoyed it. Stay informed. Stay secure.